warmer than this cup of coffee? Nothing but the warm hearts of some volunteers at a local pet education organization and the warm heart of a local restaurant owner. Hi, welcome to the show 501c3. I'm your host, Giovanna. Today we'll be speaking with Speak for Animals, a local organization that teaches the community how to take care of their pets. And we'll be speaking with Corey Wilk, the owner of City Range Restaurant, on his community involvement. I'm at the Judson YMCA where I'm going to speak with Susan Bufano, the founder of Speak for Animals, along with the other volunteers of this great organization. I'm going to find out why she founded it, what her mission is, and what personal satisfaction the volunteers gain here. Well, thank you, Susan, for taking a minute of this hectic cold day to speak with me. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. We're thrilled to be here. Okay, cool. So tell me a little bit about Speak for Animals. Why and when did you found Speak for Animals? We founded Speak for Animals in 2003. Oh, that long ago. 2003. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know what we wanted to do. We knew we wanted to help animals, and we got a phone call about six emaciated chained pit bulls oh, outside. Yeah. And we went to respond to that just to see this craziness that could be happening in Greenville. Mm -hmm. And um, we found them. They were walking skeletons, and one of them was actually dead on the end of the chain. Oh, my gosh. And from there, we decided that we knew what we needed to do, that we needed to help and go out and speak for these animals. Mm -hmm. And we started with chain dog campaigns, okay. and then we discovered that just going and talking to people about dogs on chains was not quite enough. We also mm -hmm. needed to spay and neuter their animals and mm -hmm. reduce the numbers of animals, that puppies that ended up unwanted. Okay, so you started with the chain uh, or chain less campaign. Absolutely. Is there a law or anything here in Greenville that dogs are not allowed to be on chains? What are the rules? There is no law in um, the city of Greenville okay. or Greenville County that okay. says that dogs um, can't be on chains. I'm guessing they they're pushing right that now, now though. <laughs> yes, they're uh, speaking with city council now, and okay. we're hoping that something will, will happen. Okay. Um, so you're educating these people in the community about why they shouldn't keep their dogs chained, why they should spay and neuter them. What else are you educating the community about? Uh, we, we educate about also just humane treatment of animals. Okay. Not only do we want them to be spayed and neutered, which is our primary focus, Definitely. to mm -hmm. reduce the number of animals that end up going to shelters. Yes. But mm -hmm. we also focus on, we give books out to children mm -hmm. um, uh, about just being kind to animals. Because mm -hmm. if you're kind to an animal, mm -hmm. a, a defenseless animal, right. you're also going to, it, it helps you to become kind to people too. Okay. To elderly, to children, to people that, you know, can't mm -hmm. help themselves. So do you always meet, for example, today you're at the Judson YMCA, do you always meet here? Do you change locations? And how often do you meet? We meet on the third Saturday of every month okay. at this place, at the okay. Judson Community <laughs> Center. Okay. And people say, well, goodness, you know, you've been there for three years. Aren't yeah. you ever going to go somewhere else? Right. But it's it's a very central part of mm -hmm. Greenville. We uh, reach out to a lot of people that really need us, that cannot afford to do this without us. Okay. And so it's our perfect target audience. Mm -hmm. And people and coming from other so places. so long that they know to come back here. I mean, I was outside earlier and a dog just walked up like, hey, I'm here for my shots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and literally... They said, your other volunteers said, oh, her owner will be here in 10 seconds. They're probably right behind her. Oh, yeah. That's Lady. So, we spayed her about okay. six months ago, and okay. we're working on a fence for now. And oh, great. And should be finishing that up maybe tomorrow. Okay. And uh, So, yeah, but we, we're just, we're concerned not just about the animals, but about the people that have them. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, as we all know, there's a lot of economic trouble here. Yeah. Certainly there's a lot here in the Judson community mm -hmm. and surrounding areas. Yeah. And if we can help them with their animals, it'll make them feel better. That's great. They'll be more proud of what they can do for now, their animals. Lady, you said you spayed her six months mm -hmm. ago. How much does it cost for someone to spay or neuter their dog through you um, guys? Through us, people that live in Judson, Woodside, Brandon, and Sterling, mm -hmm. everything that you've seen us do today is free. Really? Uh, All we, they have to do is come in and make the appointment? They come in and make an appointment if they live in this area. Oh, 
So that's your criteria. Yeah, that's they got to live crazy. in live over here. Absolutely. Wow. And okay. uh, we, you know, can I have to limit the numbers that we can do every month. We can't do everybody that comes in. We depend very, very heavily mm -hmm. on grants and individual donations. That's we get no federal money for okay. this or state money for this. So if you need help, whether it's financially um, or volunteers. Can they look up your uh, website? And, Absolutely. Okay, it's, what is your website It's www.speakforanimals.com. Okay. okay. They can email me directly at news uh -huh. at speakforanimals.com. Right. Um, now, just so you know, mm -hmm. what we're doing today is just part of what Speak for Animals does. Okay. We also, for people that don't live in Judson, Brandon, Sterling, or Woodside, we have a discounted program for them. Okay. If anybody can prove that they are in any type of government assistance, mm -hmm. um, then we can reduce it to just $25 for spay oh. or neuter. Okay. Um, and then $10 for shots. If anybody has a pit bull, mm -hmm. now if they live in this area and they have a pit bull, then it's free. Yes. But if they have a pit bull and mm -hmm. they live in, you know, if they're interested in using our services, just $15. That's great. That's great. So you if guys still do anything. Somebody comes to you, you'll find we'll a way we'll to find help We'll find a them. way. And for okay. folks that are fortunate enough not to be on government assistance, mm -hmm. um, then it's only $70, okay. which is still a tremendous reduction. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to go thank outside you. and speak with your other volunteers. Please do. Thanks for being <laughs> okay, here. No problem. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Sherry, Lisa, thanks for taking a minute out. I know you guys were like swamped earlier. It was crazy. Yeah, it was very crazy. And I just thought, oh, well, this is normal. Okay, this is great. Lots of people coming out here. But for you guys, you guys got more than you expected today. Is that right? Right. Okay. And Lisa, when I first came in here, you had stepped into some stuff. I guess you go into the community too. You don't let people just come here. You go out. That's correct. We were making checks. We were emptying a lot of frozen dog bowls. Uh -huh. iced over. You go to um, their houses and we, do this? We did, yes ma'am. We went to, we visited four houses and within the four houses there were probably 11 dogs. And in four houses, within four houses, four houses 11 dogs? 11 dogs. All of them were outside, <sighs> um, fenced or chained. They had shelter but no shavings. So that John means and I what? Put hay dogs, or? Yeah, we put cedar shavings I mean, I've got in indoor dogs but. Yeah, and we also fed them. You also yeah, fed them? We fed them and emptied the water, gave them fresh water, and left food with the owners too. Okay, and where do you guys find all this food? I mean, you're going to go broke if you have to supply it yourself. I know you put a lot of your own effort and money and time in this, but where do you get the food to do all of this? It's a combination of donations from, in some cases, businesses that may um, have some excess that they can donate. Okay. Um, much of it comes from our donors and our volunteers who have big hearts and uh, mm -hmm. offer up to bring some each month as well as um, write a lot of checks on behalf of Speak for Animals. That's great. Um, and then we do um, are fortunate to be able to receive um, from time to time grants that allow us to put some of that money into operating capital, although like most of the capital goes towards our spay and neuter programs. So I love how you um, have a lot of goals here. I mean, right. you got education. That is, to me, the most important thing. If they were educated, they would do it right. by themselves, You can't right? penalize them because they just don't know better. Some okay. people think that having a dog, and if you have it in a yard, that's good uh -huh. enough. Okay. okay. So they just don't know, you know, so that's what we're here for. We're here to make sure that they get educated, that they understand the overpopulation, and that there's no need to breed if we never bred again. There will uh -huh. not be a shortage of dogs and cats. No, they won't. Definitely not they a won't. shortage. No. Okay, so you got to make sure that they're spayed and neutered. You want to make sure that these dogs have food and water. I mean, you guys are your own little uh, patrol out there, a little police force here, going out and making sure they've got food, water, good shelter. Right. Um, anything else? Any other stories? Anything that you've seen that people would just drop their jaw if they heard? I mean, to me, not having a, a good shelter is already... Shelter is some, but one of the things that I think is great is um, Speak for Animals, having um, come to the Judson neighborhood for so many years, mm -hmm. has fostered a lot of relationships with the residents. Oh. And so we've had residents that refer other neighbors and recommend and help educate their peers in the community on the services, which is really helping and really what we want to have happen. Mm -hmm. And secondly, and sadly, we have people in the neighborhood who sometimes come to us and share stories about animals that are being abused. Um, in one circumstance this summer, I recall, were some pit bulls who were being withheld food and water um, to basically turn them mean. And so through some of the relationships and affiliations Speak for Animals has in the community, mm -hmm. we were able to help other agencies intercede and um, um, 
prevent and protect some animals in situations that weren't necessarily corridor spay mania yes. goal, um, but certainly were a resource now to the to the neighborhood. Have you guys spoken at any elementary, middle schools, high schools, any of those things to speak to the kids? We do. We have a volunteer, um, Caroline, who has been amazing going out and speaking to elementary school students, and um, she also has been very a very generous fundraiser in buying materials, books. I think we have some yeah. books out here mm -hmm. um, okay. that. Um, like Publix, donated, oh, Publix donated some training your dog tapes. Exactly, okay. and today um, we had a first with a new volunteer who actually works and is a teacher in this neighborhood. So wow. she was excited because she talks to her students about their animals and their lives, and so she came today to get involved in um, Speak for Animals. So better to teach the children right. about the correct way than a teacher. Than a teacher. Okay, so every volunteer, all of you guys have some great uh, assets to bring to the table. I mean, if One's a teacher, that's great. Another one knows how to build homes, dog homes. Mm -hmm. Another one's maybe a good grant writer. I mean, you guys are still accepting volunteers, am I right? Oh, they're, yeah. Forever. <laughs> we, we definitely <laughs> need volunteers. We're, you know, right now okay. we're in a process. The organization continues to grow, and the need, unfortunately, mm -hmm. continues to grow. But we're really looking at 2011 or mm -hmm. 2011, trying to really get a lot of our foundation in place to make it easier for volunteers to engage with us. Whether their specialty is helping us with marketing and communications, right. whether it's helping, like you said, build dog houses, mm -hmm. transport. So we're really working on our processes to make it easier for us to scale in the community and therefore hopefully appeal to um, more fundraising and uh, right. getting more donations from the community and grants. Okay. And what was the website? Speakforanimals.com? Speakforanimals.com. And you're on okay. Facebook. And well, you're on Facebook. So like us. We like us on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> and in fact, most of our videos and photos are on Facebook right now. We're uh -huh. in the process of redoing our web website. Okay. Um, so don't judge us by the website right now. Okay. Uh, but check back in a couple months. That's great. All right. Thank you guys so thank much you, for taking the time to speak with Thanks me. Thanks for coming out, Giovanni. Right, no problem.